Monroe County Saddle Club was the first indoor arena in Indiana. It was built right around 1964-65. At that time, it was a state-of-the-art building. And back then, the, um, there was no parking space. They used to park going down the road with horse trailers. People came from Michigan, Illinois, Kentucky, Ohio, uh, tri-state area to run there. It's continued nonstop having horse shows since that date and it's run by members, and they do have indoor and outdoor shows there, mostly contesting events, which would be barrel racing and pole bending. Horse show people are an amazing bunch of people. You still see the, some of the same people coming to the horse shows that you saw back in the 60s, 70s. It's still salt of the earth people. Barrel racing is running a cloverleaf pattern as fast as you can around three 55-gallon drums in an enclosed arena. Your horse has to complete a specified pattern. The pattern consists of three barrels, one down at the end of the arena and two about midway, separated out towards the outsides of the arena. Uh, the cloverleaf pattern can be run to the left or to the right. Most horses, for whatever reason, like to start off to the right. So the first barrel to your right, you would go past it and turn it, and then you would immediately cross the arena and turn the next barrel the opposite direction to the left, and then you would run down to your third barrel and turn it the same direction as the last barrel you turned. And then when you're done with the third barrel, you run home as fast as you can. It's you and your horse against the clock. There's nobody else you're competing against. A typical barrel race will last about a 14-7 or a 14-8. When you go to a large indoor arena like Cloverdale C Bar C Arena, that's a really good time in there. It feels like an eternity. I'm not sure I breathe when it happens. I shake and the adrenaline that happens to me after the barrel race is unbelievable. As soon as I take off, what I'm thinking about is how I'm approaching the first barrel. My horse happens to do a great job of rating himself at the second, third barrel, but not so much at the first. I have to rate him myself about two strides away from the barrel. I have to set back on the reins and set back in the saddle and even ho or whoa or even sometimes I'll say get in there to him. That's my biggest thing at the beginning of a barrel race is getting him to rate the first barrel. And everybody at the horse shows will tell you the old saying is that's the money barrel. Most horses, if you get awesome first barrel, they'll be in the money every time. My name is Dennis Maddox. I'm a barrel racer originally from Thorntown, Indiana. I've been a barrel racer most of my life. At 61 years old, I continue to love the sport. I've been going to saddle club since about 1966, 65, right in there. When I was about uh, 10, 11 years old. And there was five of us kids and my mom and dad, we all barrel raced. We had a refrigerated International Harvester 1965 truck that my dad turned into a horse hauler and a camper. Barrel racing for me has become a hobby, but also a challenge to myself to get better. To me, I'm never satisfied with my run. Even if I have a great run, I I'm happy with it, but am I satisfied? Not unless I got first place paycheck. I barrel race because I love all of the motions of going through it, the training, the going and buying feed, supplying the hay. We all have our hobbies and I find with great interest what my other friends do that don't barrel race and they find what I do as a barrel racer incredible. And that kind of keeps you going because wow, this really is neat. You know, it reminds you just how special it is and how unique it is. It's a piece of Americana, you know, and picked up in the rodeo scene and it's just so American. It's all about the people and the anticipation of that next good run. There's nothing like laying down a really good run and all of it coming together. And it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> it just doesn't. You know when you don't have a good run or when you've made a mistake. And 90% of the time, if me and my horse don't have a good run, it's my fault. For me, I guess it's, it's being part of a family legacy and kind of carrying the torch for myself because I grew up doing it and I love it. 
I ride a really nice, people-friendly horse. His registered name is MRF Special Elon. So he was a underachiever on the racetrack. He ran a total of eight or nine times, and his best time on a poor horse racing track was a second and a fourth. He was a pretty much a perennial no-show. He never broke his maiden, and what that means is he never won a race. But anyway, he was plenty fast enough, I thought, for the barrel arena, which gives him another life and a purpose. The good thing about buying a horse like MRF Special Elon, which is nickname I call him Kid, is you can bathe them, you can haul them. They've already all had all of that done to them. And they're broke for racing, but they're not broke to stop or turn or back up. And that's what I like to do to them first before you ever teach them the pattern of barrel racing. His grandfather was the all-time leading money winner as a two-year-old, won over $2 million on the quarter horse racing track. His name was Special Effort. He's uh, one of the best grandsires for barrel horses to this day. My relationship with Kid it grew very quickly. As soon as I brought him home, and that's what actually made me buy him, is the way he looked you in the eye. He will look and watch you, and, and he wants to be around people. I've never had to scold him or straighten him up. He will follow me around. I can pet anywhere on him. He enjoys that. But I've never had just one horse around me like I have Kid. So now that I have just one, the bonding has, is greater than what it was when you're running three and four horses. And I really like it that way. Our relationship now is when it comes time to run, he knows exactly what he's supposed to do and his job is. He walks around like a deadhead pleasure horse until we're at a horse show and we get near that arena. And as soon as that happens, he will literally even, his shoulders will start shaking and quivering because he, he loves it so much. And you can tell he loves it. And I've been told that by a lot of people watching him. He loves his job. I never thought I'd have a kid this long. I thought he would probably go down the road as a four-year-old, but I didn't actively have him for sale. He is for sale now, but not actively. He's such a good horse. You know, as you get older, you wonder if the next one's gonna be that good. And a lot of people told me, you better hang on to him. You may not ever have one as good as he is. And that makes you think about it. They're magnificent animals. They're beautiful. There's the thrill of having a large animal weighs 1,200 pounds running below you and feeling that, and the accomplishment of getting a horse to turn and compete competitively. It's hard to ride and do everything right on a horse running full blast and turning. Most horses work off of cues off the rider. So when you pick up a rein and you pull on it, that's cueing the horse to turn. Say your horse is coming to the barrel too tight. A lot of good riders, they simply apply pressure on the inside leg of that turn and the horse will move over. And remembering to do all of that is where the teamwork comes into play. If you make a mistake, your horse is gonna make a mistake. You have to be one with the horse, you really do. You have to practice at home, you have to ride consistently so that your balance and your weight on your stirrups and in the seat of your pants is correct. It's really a tricky thing to put a horse in the pocket correctly at the right speed to make the turn. A little different at full speed, huh? You can tell the, the power that's going on there, you know. It's a, my breath's gone just from 13 <laughs> seconds of running like that. Yeah. Staying on them and, you know, you, it's all your feet and your hands have got to be doing the right thing. That's, I should have never hit the second. I should have went in closer to it. That was my fault. None of that was his fault. The horse of choice is the American quarter horse because of their versatility. They have been bred and raised in America through some of the best stock that ever came along. They're crossed with thoroughbreds sometimes, but they got their versatility from rounding up cattle and even pulling small plows. I mean, they have had to do a little bit of everything as the breed has progressed, but mostly ranch horses. It's not about making money on a horse. It's about getting the next one and starting them. I like to train them. I like to get them going, and I like to see what I can make out of them. When I go from my home turf, I guess, if you will, where you don't have to haul, and, and you're headed to Cloverdale, you have to remember you're 
all the extra things like your feed, your hay, your water buckets, clothing, entry fee money. The reason the 14 seconds barrel race feels as long as a minute to me sometimes is it's from the time you put your horse in the horse trailer to the time you get up to the starting line. There's so much involved. When it all happens, that moment is a real special few seconds. So you savor it. You have to take ownership of everything that happens out there in the arena, and you're under a lot of scrutiny. You have a crowd just like you would a sporting event. What gets me going is the competitiveness of it. I'm about a half a second behind the best there is. I've run in a barrel race that had over 400 horses, and I was the 35th fastest horse. To me, that's what it's all about. It's not I beat all those other people. It's that I was able to ride good enough and my horse was trained well enough that we were that competitive. And that's what I go for. The good thing is nowadays there's an electric beam that goes across the arena that you break with your horse and that shuts off when you come across. There was a whole lot more fighting and, and uh, hell raising back in the day when a judge was standing in the arena with a stopwatch in his hand telling you what your time was. I hear the hooves hitting the ground when I'm running. It's every little thing. I never hear the crowd. It's like you're in a vacuum. It's almost in slow motion to you. It's the most exciting thing there is. The longest stretch for me is right as we get going. It's kind of a journey, if you will. After you turn the first barrel and you get, if it's a good barrel, then you're really excited because then you know you've gotten that over with. So then now let's focus if everything's going right. How are we approaching the second? Is he going to cheat on me? Because sometimes they'll set down on you a little too soon and hit a barrel. Am I driving hard enough as I'm going over there? What do I want to do? When do I want to set up in the saddle? Because I lean forward when I want the horse to run and I set up when I want him to turn. All of those thought processes ultimately are so satisfying that you're savoring them literally as you're running the event. And as I've gotten older, I've, I tend to do that. You know, I'm blessed enough that I can barrel race a horse and that I'm fairly competitive at my age. The very first thing you do when you cross the finish line is your ear listens to the announcement of what time you just run. And either that's a happy moment or that's a where did I lose my time moment. And you immediately go start thinking about the next barrel race and what can you do to be better. No pressure, huh? <laughs> Well, it all starts when you're in the pen, they call it. So most barrel racers have a pen separated from the makeup arena. In between each smoothing of the arena, they'll call your name as the next drag. Because they're dragging the arena, they only allow those horses to come up near the arena. You start showing your horse the barrel pattern. You can walk up right to where the entrance to the arena is and let them look at the barrels. You tighten your saddle, you make sure that's right. You set your feet where you're on the balls of your feet, not too deep in your stirrups. You're thinking about, do I need to adjust my reins a little shorter or longer? Have I got my horse too worn up? Is he too hot? Is he too cold? I try to keep my horse by himself and focus on what we're doing. So when we're ready to go, we go. As soon as I peel him off in the fence to go up to the arena, he'll come on the muscle. He'll start prancing and dancing. He knows it's about to happen. They feel you tense up right through their body. They know, and you feel them tense up. So veins are popping out on their neck. You you hear them breathing harder. Tag is set. Green is ready. Draw 46. Ten is set. MRF, specialty long. You're up. Amber Bryan on deck. Jimmy Law at the hole. Time would have been a 16.053, but it's going to be in no time to see barrels down. Tough luck to this. we got a hold on the patterns while we get the barrels set. Patterns ready for draw number 47 in the barrel. Smooth through traffic. Jenny Law, you're up next. Shelly Sirius is going to be the last tracker in this track. Thank you. Thank
will be a sad day. Um, but I, I need for him to go on with somebody. He's uh, getting a little fast for me. He's wanting to go and work, and I'm, I can't seem to keep up with him here lately. So you still feel good about his potential? Yes, oh yeah. So is a lot of other people. Now, I've got people tell me all the time, that's a fantastic horse, you know. All he needs is to be hauled. You know, he needs to be seasoned. He needs to see more barrel races and, and do it and do it good. So, I just don't have the means to do that. What are you doing?